Hi, I'm Hannah. I'm a contemporary short fiction and fantasy writer. I've published two best-selling collections, Little Birds and Starlight. That was a bunch of pins falling down. I create educational content for writers and other creatives here on YouTube at twitch.tv slash Hannah Lee Kidder and on Skillshare. One of my patrons requested a video about newsletters. I don't remember who it was. It was a minute ago. It may have been Nancy. Either way, thank you to my patrons for sponsoring this video and thank you to whoever requested it. Let me know in a comment. Anyway, today I have tips for crafting your newsletter content, how to get people to subscribe to your newsletter, and how to get people to actually open and read your newsletters. But first, why should you have one? I have a degree in marketing, and during college, my professors would not shut up about email marketing. And as a freshman, I was like, who gives a shit? And you might be thinking the same thing. It's 2020, who opens emails? Turns out a lot of people. And if someone has specifically subscribed to your newsletter, they're already at least partially committed to you, so half of your marketing job is done. You have their interest, you have their ear, and you are in their inboxes. With social media, it's difficult to market because there's so much noise, but with email marketing, you're right in front of them. Most people at least skim every subject line of emails before they delete them, so you have an opportunity to get their attention. This makes email marketing very important and potentially very impactful. Another benefit of email marketing is the analytics. With my email service, I can see who opened what, who clicked on what, and you can basically gauge the success of your different campaigns for each individual subscriber. So now we know why email campaigns are important. Now let's talk about how to manage them. Some of these tips aren't set in stone. Every industry is a little bit different and every audience is gonna be a little bit different. So take these tips, see what you think applies to you and then measure the success of them, then go forward from there. Here are seven tips for crafting the content of your newsletters. Number one, use clear headings. You want your email to be skim friendly. That means that someone is just looking over it, they can see the headings and decide if they care about it enough to read that section. Most people skim, so if you don't have that kind of guide for them, they're not gonna get the information that they need. Here's an example from one of my own newsletters, having trouble motivating yourself to write. If someone isn't having trouble with motivation or they aren't even a writer, they're probably gonna skip that section. And that's all you want, something quick and digestible to let your readers know if they want to invest the time to read. Tip two, use images. I try to use images for every heading. For example, I included the graphic I used to announce this event on Instagram. Having something visual gets a lot more attention than just saying, hey, we're having a Twitch stream come over. Tip three, offer value. If your letter is completely self promo or news about you and your life, you probably won't gain or maintain a very consistent open rate. So make sure you're giving your reader something. Some things I've offered in the past are exclusive discounts, like 50% off of one of my marketing services. And I won't offer that discount anywhere except the newsletter. A newsletter exclusive giveaway, for example, this month I'm giving away a 5,000 word writing critique to just some random person from my mailing list. I also like to attach downloads like I have my Twilight rewrite video series where we're editing the Twilight books. So whenever I finish a chapter, I send that PDF out in my newsletter. I've also created like writing prompt lists, self-care checklists, little mini marketing plans and stuff like that. Something that takes me an hour or two to make it can get me 150 new mailing list subscribers who are interested in the specific content that I offer. And that's a really valuable time investment. So think about what you can offer that would make sense for your industry and your audience. Tip four. Link your shit. If you're updating your subscribers on like a recent project, if you're a writer, for example, then use a cute graphic or a character portrait or something to represent that project. Then make that image a link to somewhere that it was posted, like on Instagram. Every time you have a bit of information, try to also have a call to action. For example, check out my Instagram. There's no reason to put something that might be interesting to your readers if you're not going to lead them somewhere else if they are interested. So typically you want most of the things that you include to either be a funnel somewhere else or to be something that is of direct benefit to your reader, like a download. Tip five, keep it concise. I usually try to have between two sentences to maybe like a medium length paragraph under each heading. This just helps to keep it skimmable. I do know people who make their emails much longer and I don't read them. So I think the briefer the better, say what you gotta say in a clean, concise manner and then hop to the next thing. But these are one of the tips that are gonna vary by industry and readership, so do what you think is best. I just don't think there's a reason to waste people's time. Tip six is something that a lot of people do for writing books, but create an ideal reader and write to them. So basically you make up an imaginary person, uh, their age, where they're from, what they're interested in, stuff like that, or you pick an actual member of your audience that you feel like represents the majority and you write to them. This just makes your letters feel like more personalized and less like you're sending something out to 800 people. So it makes your letters come off a lot more human. 
which makes them more readable. Tip seven, send a test email to yourself or someone else. I send mine to my roommate because he's really good at spotting errors that I might miss. But make sure that you preview your newsletter before you send it out to everyone. Also make sure all of your links work and go to the correct place. So how do we get people to subscribe to begin with? I've got four tips for getting people to sign up to your newsletter. Number one, ask them to sign up to your newsletter. I know that sounds basic, but I've had so many friends who have just like stayed at 15 to 20 members because they never told anyone they had a newsletter. It was just like a little bitty sign up form at the bottom of their website and no one was like being driven there. I like to announce my newsletters a few days before they go out on whatever social media platform and I mention what's going to be included that might get people interested in signing up. And then after I send it out, I'll announce it again and tell new subscribers to go check their spam folder because that's where it'll go until they add me to their address book. What's funny is that I normally get way more subscribers after I announce that it's been sent than I do announcing that it's going to be sent. There's something about FOMO that make people interested. So if you can't announce before and after. Tip two, bait people with incentive. Like I said, if you're providing value in every newsletter, you'll keep a more consistent open rate, but also let people know exactly what you're offering. For example, in my Twilight Rewrite videos, I mention, hey, if you want to read the edited version, I send out the PDFs in my newsletter. And every single person who signs up for my newsletter gets a list of 10 writing prompts with a welcome email. There are some people who just wanna hear about you and your life and your projects, but most people do not give a shit and you need to give them some value in order to keep that open line of communication. Tip three, make a pop-up on your website mentioning the incentive. I've always hated those newsletter pop-ups, so it took me a long time to decide to put one on my website, but it doesn't like interrupt your viewing. It just slides out at the bottom and it mentions those 10 writing prompts. So I'm fine with that. And it ridiculously boosted my new subscribers because it grabs attention, it's super quick, and all they have to do is enter their email. So like, why not? Tip four, offer something in every email. I keep coming back to this, but give your readers value, exclusive discounts, downloadables, whatever it is you want to offer, add something in every newsletter so that they'll open the next one. If you have no idea what to offer, just brainstorm, experiment, and then see what they respond well to. So we've got our content and formatting, we've got our subscribers, how do we get people to actually open and read our emails? I've got four more tips. There are two main things that marketing research indicates will make or break if your email is open. Subject lines and from lines. From lines are super easy, that's just who the email is coming from. People are a lot more likely to open emails if they know who's sending it. If you're, for example, an indie author, you might have your author name, whether it's your real name or not, but it's what your online presence is built around. That's maybe even how you got your newsletter subscribers to begin with. And then maybe you have like a name for your publishing company that you publish under. Put your name in the from line. People are much more likely to open emails from an actual person than from a business. You also need good subject lines and I have a few basic tips for writing good subject lines. Number one is to keep it concise. You can look up best practices on verbiage and length and whether or not to use emojis. It can depend on your industry. So do a little research to see what's best for your audience, but default to conciseness no matter what. Make it compelling. Bring your A game to that subject line. It might be the only thing people read. And three, be honest about the content. Let your readers know what's in the email. That's another thing that can help you build trust. Like, yeah, you could try to use clickbait and be deceitful, but honest subject lines are another thing that's going to build your reader's trust and keep a more consistent open rate. And also, prevent people from unsubscribing your newsletter. Tip two, build trust with your audience by providing good content. If you send out a super boring newsletter with nothing for your audience, they're a lot less likely to open the next newsletter. So take your time writing them, make them interesting and make them hold value for the readers so that they will open the next one. One way to build trust immediately is with your welcome email. So like I said, in my automated welcome email, I have a gift for my new subscribers. So you're giving them a reason to believe that opening your emails is worth the time. So start off strong with a good welcome email. I already mentioned the subject line and the from line, but don't underestimate the power of your first sentence. It's usually what shows in the preview and it's the first thing they'll read after they open it. So take some time crafting a compelling one. That's all I got for you today. Give me a like if any of these tips are helpful for you and subscribe because I make new videos every Thursday. In the description, you'll find links to my books, classes, and check this out, my mailing list. <laughs> I'll see you next week. Bye.